Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moyd. I'm a communication specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, the Federal Programs Office provides students throughout the school system a range of services from pre-kindergarten to family literacy, and the list goes on and on to include one of the county's best-kept secrets, the Indian Education Program. Now, through the years, this program has positively impacted the lives of so many children and their families. And after this break, we'll talk with two educators from the Indian Education Program about how what they are doing each day is making a difference in the lives of children and whole communities during this edition of Get Connected. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Did you find a flashlight on the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Get a kit, make a plan, be informed. Visit ready.gov. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected, where we're discussing the powerful impact the Indian Education Program has had on the lives of children and their families. Now joining us is the School Systems Coordinator of Indian Education, Darlene Ransom, and Gay Mensell, an Indian Education Academic Tutor. Welcome to the both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. I'm so glad you're here. You. you know, we tried to schedule this and different things were coming up for Darlene. <laughs> At one point, I thought you were trying to avoid us, Darlene. <laughs> I may have been. <laughs> and I see I'm she, here now. she just brought you along, yeah, Gay. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm here. I love her. I'm coming. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you all are here. Thank you. Now, talk to us a little about, a bit about Indian education. What is the program about exactly? Well, Indian education has been around for a long time, more than 40 years. As a matter of fact, I'm a product of Indian mm -hmm. education from another school system. Okay. And um, in Cumberland County, what we do is serve the American Indian student that is non-proficient in reading and in math, and that's in our elementary and middle schools. Now, Indian education over the course of those 40 years has really gone through some changes. Okay. Um, when it first started, it was about mm -hmm. um, Social work. Social work. It was about dental assistance, getting eyeglasses for children, uh, making sure that they had school supplies, that they had clothing, they had warm clothing, mm -hmm. make sure they had, making sure they had coats for the winter. Mm -hmm. So over a course of, of many years, it has um, it's evolved. It's evolved. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes. But and now the program, does it still work with some of those aspects? Well, it does, but we don't have funding to provide for eyeglasses or for clothes. Or We do do some crafts mm -hmm. and um, some cultural things during Native American History Month, but what we typically do is make those referrals out to the social worker in those schools for those needs. Okay. Now, let me ask this. Both of you are from Indian tribes. We mm -hmm. are. Okay, and tell me which tribe. I'm Lumbee. I'm, okay. I'm also Lumbee. Okay. Now, majority of the young people that are in the program, are they from, what tribes are you finding most of them are from? Most of our students are mm -hmm. Lumbee because of Robinson County bordering Cumberland County. Mm -hmm. But then we have a large population of Coharie mm -hmm. because of Sampson County and Harnett Counties. And then... And we actually have over 40 tribes really? represented within the program. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the military, of course, contributes to that also bringing in different tribes. And how is an individual identified as being able to qualify for the program? Well, in order to be in the program, it has to be one grandparent that is a full-blooded American Indian. Okay. 
and, and then they have to complete what we call a 506 federal form. Okay. So those forms we keep in the office and um, the academic tutors and our youth development specialists are really the ones that are um, out in the field where the rubber meets the road is, mm -hmm. is the way I say it. So they have direct contact mm -hmm. with those students and they talk with the parents. You know, a student may say, well, I'm an American Indian, that's all well and good, but we have to qualify that and do the research, do the, make sure the, the form is completely filled out and is accurate. So once it gets into the office, we typically, I do the background check, so okay. to speak, and on those, sure. yeah. yeah. And you mentioned academic tutor, and that's where you fall in game. Yes. What is an academic tutor? Our job, the main job, is to, overall, it's to make each child su successful, each Native American child. But um, our main focus at this time with the program is to make every Native American child in the Common County Schools proficient in reading and math. While that's what, some of what we do an average day for a tutor, there's many aspects of that day. We might have to make referrals to counselors, social mm -hmm. workers. We might have to make phone calls to moms, dads. We might have to answer emails from parents. So we work with the parents and the professionals within each school to help each child be successful. And sometimes that requires more than reading and math tutoring. Mm -hmm. So whatever that child needs for that day, we try to accomplish that or help that child to succeed in that for that day. And how many, did you say how many academic There's tutors? There's actually three academic tutors, Ms. Angie Torres and also Ms. Rhonda Evans. And so we have how many students in the program, uh, roughly? We have over a thousand students enrolled in our program, oh, wow. but the academic advisors, um, the academic tutors, actually work with in excess of over 250 Experience. students providing one-on-one -on -one direct services. Every week. Ooh, so you visit at least uh, 200? I have around 80 or more students wow. on my schedule as of last year. And we try to, every week, unless there's testing or some reason that child can't be pulled, we will tutor that student weekly those 250 students, the three tutors. That is great. Yeah, they're in a lot of schools. And then our youth development specialist is going to be working in the high schools. And um, that person is mm -hmm. going to serve in excess of 300 students in those five high schools. Mm -hmm. So mm. we're a very small department, but we do great Thank big God. things. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. You sound, is that the motto? <laughs> well, that's <laughs> going to be the motto. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be the motto. Yeah, and that was motto. my next question I have here. Why is there a need for an Indian education program? Well, Indian education is the only vehicle to serve the American Indian student in the school district that actually serves a particular population. And we know that um, we have the highest dropout rate. Mm -hmm. We have the highest rate of suicide. Mm -hmm. We have the highest rate of substance abuse. And we know how important it is that somebody work with those students that understand where they're coming from. And what better persons than um, the Office of Indian Education who employ folks that, that have been there, that look like our students. Mm -hmm. That is so important. And students will navigate to the, the tutors mm -hmm. and to the youth development specialists because they know that it's somebody that understands mm -hmm. their plight and their, their struggles and the obstacles and can relate to them. So it's imperative that we have this program. And the program really came about because of broken treaties, because of the trust, um, lack of trust with the federal government and the federal government made the promise um, more than 40 some years ago, mm -hmm. saying that we're gonna right some of those wrongs and the way that we're going to do that is to implement Indian Education. It's the 1972 Indian Education Act that became law. And, um, and since then, um, we've been around doing great things mm -hmm. and working cool. with our students to, to reduce the dropout rate. We still have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, there's much, much work to be done because we can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. It takes the entire community to, to make a difference and address the needs of the Indian student. 
And you said as a product of the Indian Education Program, but in what, Robinson County? In Robinson County. How did it impact your life as a young person? Well, we did a lot of field trips back then. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember going on the campus, um, then it was called Pembroke State College. Mm -hmm. uh, if that tells you how old I am, that was many mm -hmm. moons ago. Mm -hmm. But just being on that college campus made such a difference, mm -hmm. you know, because I saw mm -hmm. American Indian professors and instructors and, and folks working on that campus and I knew that someday I too could, could do, do that, that. could, right, could right. be there myself. And um, just doing the arts and the crafts and being able to talk about being an American Indian and, and you know, uh, the revitalization of dance and drumming, which for so long was taken away from us and we were forbidden from talking about those kind of things. Um, because the Europeans wanted to colonize us. So, you know, there was that revitalization, the rebirth. So we were excited about that. So I knew that I too could someday be a professional. That's good. That's yeah. a good thing. That is a really good thing. Yeah. Wow, I mean, I'm just going mm -hmm. on listening to that. It's just my mind. I have so many other questions, yeah. but I won't go into all of that. I'll try to stay focused. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try to stay focused. Mm -hmm. But, um, Tell us about some of the, the programs and resources that are available to students and to their parents. Okay, do you want to talk a little bit about that or you want, I can talk about Native mm -hmm. Circles. Let's talk about that. Okay, all right. Native Circles is our baby program. That's what I call it, our baby okay. program. Because that's from prenatal to three year, three year olds, um, from the womb until they're, they're three year olds. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a literacy program. So what we do is we have a parent educator who goes into the home. It's a home visiting program. Mm -hmm. And this came about because um, I was the social worker for the office for many years. Okay. And when I would get referrals and go into homes on a home visit, I noticed that we had babies that were not in a daycare setting or in a preschool setting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I came back to, to my supervisor and I said, you know, there are so many needs that are being unmet. So uh, we were fortunate enough to write a grant, get those monies, and um, have the opportunity to go into those homes. So um, it's, and, and we have adopted the Parents as Teachers evidence-based curriculum, and it's a 90-minute per week class, and the, the parent educator goes into the home, has the class already prepared, uh, works with the parent, works with the child, always takes a book. I mean, there's always a book in that home. Mm. So um, that changes who that parent is, but it, we also know that it, it changes who that child is because we're able to identify learning disabilities early on, and it also is helping to socialize that child. And our goal is to, um, to get those children in a preschool setting or in a daycare mm -hmm. setting. Because mm -hmm. studies have already shown that the American Indian child, when they start the kindergarten, they know approximately 20 words that they can understand, comprehend, right. and speak. Where non-natives know in excess of 100 words. So we may mm -hmm. think that we're starting out at the same level playing field, but in reality, we're not. So that parent educator gets to go in that home, talk to that parent, share with that parent, you know, the needs and the goals to, to get their children in a, in a daycare setting, in a preschool setting, and we're able to help them do that. So we're excited about that program. That is a grant. Everything we do in Indian education yes, is a grant. Okay. So, um, and we're very fortunate. We have a wonderful grant office, a wonderful staff that is always there to help us to navigate and, and work through any kind of issues or problems mm -hmm. that we have. Right, right. So, um, but that, that's our, I call it again, our baby program. Well, it sounds like it's been very impactful. It has, it has, it's, it's a very good program. And the parents seem to be pretty receptive they to are. you all coming in. They are, mm -hmm. they're very receptive. A little reluctant in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we work for the school system, we're still a government agency, even though we are, we look like them, we act like them, mm -hmm. we talk like them, we're still part of a government agency. So we may not get in the door the first time or the second time, but eventually we'll get in because we don't give up. All right. We don't give up. We we're going to be right up. back. We don't, we don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because you don't give up, you're going to stay here with me, right? Oh, yeah. We'll All be right. right here. Okay. Don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. You. Stick around for more Get Connected. Imagine what you'd see if every
Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Take my hand and start a brand new day. Underneath everything we are, we are all people. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Darlene Ransom, the School Systems Coordinator of Indian Education, and Gay Mansell, an Indian Education Academic Tutor in the Cumberland County Schools. And we're discussing the positive impact Indian Education has had on the lives of children and their families. Now, ladies, before we went to the break, um, we were talking about your baby program. Did you say baby program? I call it the baby program. Yeah, yeah. Native Circles. Native Circles. And I know that um, you all have the Title VII, as far as another grant, the Title VII Formula Grant. Mm -hmm. And that's called what, the Parent, what, the parent commi Committee? No, Title VII okay. is the grant. Title okay. VII Formula Indian Education is the grant that employs the tutors, the youth development specialists, and myself, the okay, Native Circles. Smart Start is the uh, parent educator. And formula means just that. It's based on a formula. Okay. That depends on how many American Indian students you have enrolled in your mm -hmm. program, determines how many dollars the school system is going to get. Okay, got it. So that's it. the reason it's called formula. Okay, okay. Yeah. So let's go back to the academic mm -hmm. tutor. Mm -hmm. and Gay as one of our academic tutors. Now, we, before we went to the break, um, or during the break, rather, we were kind of talking about the graduation rate and mm -hmm. the number of graduates we have coming through. And I'm sure a lot of the, the rate climbing is mm -hmm. attributed to the, the hard work that you all as academic tutors put in. Mm -hmm. And what is so wonderful about this program I will meet a child in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And I will sometimes, and they graduate from my program because they're successful, they're doing better, they're on grade level. But I can see them kindergarten through eighth grade as they mature and grow and be successful. And then occasionally I'll go to the high school and just visit one. If he might be having a problem. I just want to reconnect because we have many years of connection. And I think that's one of the successes of the program. It's the communication between administration, the professionals in the school, mm -hmm. the parents, the help we get from federal programs, Ms. Ransom. It's a team effort, it's not me by myself, but it's the support I get from the other professionals that I deal with daily, and that's part of our success. That's great, that is great. And I know um, with the graduation rate, and you all had a special graduation ceremony mm -hmm. last year. We did, and that was, uh, we were fortunate enough to receive the Dreamcatcher grant for four years. Oh, now, um, we're going to reapply. We did not receive that this year. It is a competitive grant, but okay. we're going to apply again. Mm -hmm. But when we had that grant last year, because the academic advisors were following that cohort all the way through those four years, we had the highest graduation rate ever in the wow. history of Cumberland County Schools. So we know that it makes a difference when there are American Indian teachers and advisors literally holding their hands mm -hmm. all the way through high school. Now we hope that we don't always have to hold their hand, but initially that's what we know works. Yeah, to so get the foundation, to, to build get that the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, and the parents appreciate that. We've got more American Indian students going to college and universities than ever before. Not only just going, but they're graduating. Great. And they're coming back and they're sharing their stories with us. So we're excited about that. 
is there a lot of work when they go off and graduate to try to bring them back into our system? Well, we, we actually had uh, one working for us when we had the Green, mm. Green Dreamcatcher project. Okay. It was a student that I had worked with at Cape Fear High School. And um, he's a graduate of Methodist. Oh. And when he graduated, he called and wanted to know if there were any jobs available. And I said, well, it just so happens, but mm -hmm. I can't promise you anything. Right, right. So he applied and, and we were fortunate mm -hmm. enough to have him back on board. That's so that, that's a good story. It yeah. is, that is good. Yeah. And now he's working back at Methodist. Great. So he's working on campus there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. that's great, that's yes. all right. Now I know that November is a special month there. Talk to us about why mm. November is so special to the American Indian. Okay, I'll let you talk about that. <laughs> uh, November is Native American Indian History Month, and the tutors and myself, uh, we try to incorporate uh, our culture by doing crafts, even our reading selections, our math activities. A lot of things we do that whole entire month, we try to keep it. Uh, go along with the standards of Cumberland County Schools, but still incorporate our culture, the reading, math, and doing, we do a special art activity also. And another thing I'd like to say, mm -hmm. if we're not servicing a child in a school in Cumberland County, it's because we have to go with the highest population of Native American students. You might say, well, my child is below grade level and no one's seeing them, but we have to target the schools that have the highest population of Native American students. Okay, okay. And okay, go right ahead. And just along those lines about Native American History Month, uh, that was a landmark bill that uh, Governor, uh, I'm sorry, President Bush in 1992 mm -hmm. um, enacted. And uh, we're excited and mm -hmm. have been about that. So that gives the entire country a chance to learn about us. It gives us an opportunity to share our traditions and our values and, and um, our, our belief systems, our religion, our, our politics. It mm -hmm. gives mm -hmm. of the country and, and the locals a chance to, to hear and see who we are and what we're mm -hmm. about. That's good. And, and build bridges. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity to build bridges as well. And it's good you said that. Um, I know once again, we in conversation we had during the break, mm -hmm. um, in building bridges and, and those types of things, mm -hmm. a lot of times I find I, I find for myself that, you know, when it comes to discussing race and ethnicity, mm. people are kind of like, yes. you know, they don't really want to go there yeah. because it's like, I don't want to be politically incorrect. Yeah. But you were saying we welcome questions. Absolutely. Come to our powwows, powwows. come to our events, oh, ask we, questions. Yes. Absolutely. We want you to be a part of everything that we do. And we know mm. that once we all are together, and we understand, I want to learn from you. Mm -hmm. I know that you want to learn from me. And that's how we grow, right. not just as a people, mm -hmm. but as a community. Yeah. You know, there's, there's that fear of asking us, yeah. um, what tribe do you belong to? Yeah. Well, ask us what tribe yeah. do we belong to? Yeah, because we you want think, to share well, that. Should I say tribe or should I say cultural group? Right. You know, you just want to make sure that you're not offending. And mm. I think that's where a lot of people kind of step back, you know, even yeah. with the African American culture, mm. kind of step back like, yeah. oh, should I go there? You know, mm. but I think a lot of times people are just excited that someone mm. wants to know. Exactly. Yeah. They have an interest in finding yeah. out more because then that's when we break down those walls of ignorance. Right. And our children, you know, they want a teacher to say, well, tell me more about your mm -hmm. tribe. You know, I want to learn more about you. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that just sparks an interest in that child. Mm -hmm. That means, oh, they're really interested in mm -hmm. who I am and what I'm about. And, and that in mm -hmm. itself, too, you'll hear me say this, it changes who a child is. Mm -hmm. It really does. That's and so. also, like when I work with my students and there's different events or fests going on, and I tell my children, if you can attend with your parents, please do attend. Because when we learn about other people, it opens our, our minds and it, it, we learn understanding, we're educated more, and we, we just have more acceptance of each other exactly. if we know each other. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it, it tears down barriers it does. when we can talk mm -hmm. and communicate and dialogue mm -hmm. about who we are. That's great, that's a good thing, that's a great thing. Now, what have been some obstacles the program has um, you know, overcome or seen in this 40 odd years mm -hmm. of time? Well, one of the biggest obstacles is always funding. 
You know, yeah. we never know uh, where we're going to stand from year to year, and, and this year especially, is, and last year. We've Beautiful. had drastic cuts. Yeah. Um, obstacles, not talking about who we are. Like we just said, the conversation we just had, we want you to engage with us. Obstacles, we don't have enough American Indian educators in our schools. Yes. We need more Indian teachers. We need more Indian staff. Um, they need to be out there. They need to be on the front lines. So I see that as an mm -hmm. obstacle. Um, and again, just not understanding who we are as a people and, and knowing that we're not so different. Mm -hmm. We are just like everybody yeah. else. Our needs, our desires, mm -hmm. our, our pains are, are mm. just the same. Yeah, that's neat. That yeah. is so neat. Um, and you know what? I'm looking at the clock on the wall, and I want to make sure I get to one other thing, but what I'm going to do is just ask you, have any last words regarding the Indian Education Program or anything that you did not get to share with us? I think you, we've covered, there's so much mm -hmm. in the life of Indian Education and the life of a tutor mm -hmm. that, and a youth development specialist, just the things that go on during the course mm -hmm. of a day or the course of a week that there's no way we could talk mm -hmm. about it in the 30-minute um, segment or, right, yeah. Right. So. But what thought would you like to leave with our viewers about your program and its success thus far? Indian education, we're doing great things. And uh, again, a very small department doing great big things. And please, if you need us, let us be the first line of defense. If there's a problem in the school with an American Indian mm -hmm. parent, if there is a question that you have about tribal affiliation, tribal enrollment, pick up the phone, call our office. You know, I can help with tribal enrollment, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether you're Lumbee, Kohari, Navajo, Apache, I can help with that, we can help mm -hmm. with that. Our department will never say no. Right. All right. Well, we're going to end with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. I, we so appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll have to have you back, okay? Okay. All right, Gay? She's coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not without her. <laughs> okay. Well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time. <laughs>